गुड मॉर्निंग तहमीना खान इज़ हेयर टुडे आई विल एक्सप्लेन टू यू द कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ ट्रिग्नोमेट्री फ्राम द सिलेबस ऑफ सी आई ए ओ लेवल एड मैथ्स फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी विल सी द रिक्वायरमेंट ऑफ द सिलेबस एंड देन वी विल गो इन टू डिटेल सो अकॉर्डिंग टू द सिलेबस यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड सिक्स ट्रिग्नोमेट्रिक फंक्शन साइन कॉस्ट एंड सेक कोसेक एंड कॉट राइट एंड आफ्टर दैट यू नीड टू अंडरस्टैंड वट डज इट मीन बाई एम्पलीट्यूड एंड पीरियड एंड द रिलेशनशिप बिटवीन द ग्राफ्स related trigonometric functions you will see the graph of these type of trigonometric function where a is any integer b could be integer or uh, fraction and c is again an integer and what do they represent i let you know when we will go into the detail of each one of them and then after that according to syllabus you need to know identities and you need to know how to solve trigonometric equation so in this topic trigonometry basically you need to know three things the sketches how to solve equation and how to handle identities so let's start with first of all the basic concept so far we have learned that trigonometric ratios are applied only on right angle triangle so now we will see how it is applied on any triangle right so for that you need to understand the concept of basic angle and general angle and then sin in each quadrant now when what do i mean by sin in each four quadrant if you divide a circle into four parts so this is called first quadrant this is called second quadrant third quadrant and fourth quadrant it doesn't matter either you are rotating it from here or you are rotating it from here quadrant name will remain same first second third and fourth so either you are going this way in rotation or this way the name of the quadrant doesn't change okay so first quadrant mean we are talking about angle 0 to 90 degree second quadrant mean we are talking about 90 to 180 degree third quadrant mean 180 degree to 270 degree and fourth quadrant mean 270 degree to 370 degree when you go anti clockwise angles are represented with positive sign for example if i have rotated this pen this much from here this much right and suppose this is 20 degree so i will say plus 20 whereas if i will go from here clockwise sorry this is fixed this this point is fixed right center so i will say this rotation is minus 20 degree okay so now let's see first of all what is basic and general angle number 1 basic angle is represented by alpha sin and general angle is represented by theta so symbols are important you need to understand so what is a basic angle now for example i have rotated something from here till here right so when i measure angle with the x axis it is called basic angle if i am here after rotation for example all the way from here till here like in this example so with the x axis the angle you will measure is called basic angle but when you measure from this 0 degree because 0 degree is here on this line on the positive x axis so this angle is called general angle so when your basic angle is in the second quadrant and you are measuring anti clockwise then then your general angle will be 150 degree in this case your basic angle and general angle both be 30 degree why because it is in the first quadrant and basic angle is always measured with the x axis in that quadrant so in the first quadrant it is this x axis so my basic angle is 30 and if i am measuring clock anti clockwise then my general angle is also 30 let's see more example now look at this case for example i have rotated something this way right this is my fixed point so i have rotated something here so it is anti uh, clockwise so clockwise the basic angle is 20 degree because i am in the fourth quadrant and i will measure with the positive x axis right i am in the fourth quadrant definitely x axis is here so i will measure from here 
so my basic angle angle is 20 degree and what is my general angle it is minus 20 why because i am measuring clockwise and the range is given for example minus 360 to 0 degree so this is giving you clear hint that you have to measure clockwise so how do you decide that either you have to measure clockwise or anti-clockwise it depends in the question on the range given to you for angle right now theta can be represented by x whatever given in the question okay now let's see another example for example something has been rotated all the way from here till here right here so now you are in the third quadrant this quadrant is third quadrant so now your basic angle with the x-axis in the third quadrant is 20 degree so you will write your basic angle is 20 degree but what about your general angle general angle is always measured with the positive x-axis so all the way here 180 minus 20 is 160 but why I am putting negative sign because I am measuring it clockwise right so my general angle is minus 160 if range is given to me minus 360 to 0 degree which is giving me a hint that I have to measure clockwise make sense so let's see more example here now suppose if the range is given 0 to 360 so it is giving you clear hint that you have to measure anti-clockwise now suppose the question says that alpha is 20 degree and it is in the third quadrant so for visualization you can draw this sketch roughly and you see this is my third quadrant basic angle is always made with the x-axis so what is my general angle I will come all the way from here till here right from the positive x-axis I will come anti-clockwise till here now this is straight line is 180 degree right from here till here it is 180 so 180 plus 20 is 200 so if your basic angle is in the third quadrant and it is 20 degree then your general angle will be 200 degree let's see another case I have just explained this one earlier in the above example so again in the third quadrant if my basic angle is 20 degree and range is this then it means I have to go all the way from here till here and basic angle is here so my general angle is this one why did I show you this thing just to show you the meaning of this okay what does it mean 0 to minus 3 degree mean you will go all the way from here till here but because basic angle is in the third quadrant so my general angle will be minus 160 right okay so now remember that basic angle is always positive because you are making it with the x-axis in that quadrant right so basic angle is always positive whereas general angle can be positive or negative it depends you are measuring it clockwise or anti-clockwise if it is clockwise it is negative if it is anti-clockwise it is positive so let's try out this so you can pause the video here and try out yourself and then you see the solution so question is find the general angle if it is in the first quadrant and alpha is 30 degree so if you want to try out yourself you can for the visualization you can sketch it and then uh, answer the question so anyway let me show you here so and range is minus 360 to 0 so it means you will go clockwise or anti-clockwise yes you will go clockwise right so now you can put it on pause if you want to so let's see the hint is that it is in the first quadrant it means it will be here right and because the range is minus 360 to 0 I will measure this way okay 0 to minus 360 so I will measure this way and it is saying alpha 30 it means I will draw basic angle here 30 degree so let's see so this is my basic angle it is in the first quadrant and it is 30 degree the range is 0 to minus 360 so I will go all the way from here till here so what is this angle 
complete circle is 360. So from 360 if I subtract 30, I will get 330. And why did I put minus sign along? It's because I am measuring it clockwise. Right? Okay, so, so far we have seen the relationship between basic angle and general angle. Now we will see the importance of signs. Signs mean plus minus in all the four quadrant. So, it is introduced like this. The conclusion is given to you. But at the same time you can um, inquire it. Okay, how it is happening. But for the conclusion it is made easy for a student that ASTC. First quadrant A, second quadrant S, third quadrant T, fourth quadrant C. Now what do they mean? They mean that all the uh, trigonometric functions sine, cos, tan, if you take any angle between 0 to 90 degree, they will give you positive answer. For example, I take sine 30, cos 40, cos 30, tan 80, all will give me positive answer. Whereas in the second quadrant, which is from 90 to 180, you can try it out on the calculator. Take any angle, for example 100, and you take sine 100, cos 100, tan 100. Only sine will give you positive answer. Okay, you can check it for any angle between 90 to 180. Do not include 90 and 180, I will come to that later. I said in between. Similarly, if you try out between 180 to 270, only tan will give you positive answer. So, for example, take any angle between 180 and 270, for example, 230. So, check for sine 230, cos 230, tan 230 in your calculator. And only tan answer will be positive. Similarly for cos, right? Now, how do student remember this ASTC? Different um, phrases they have made. For example, uh, you can remember... Mm. all students take chemistry or uh, whatever phrase you like to make to remember it it's okay right so students have made different phrases to remember different things it's always fun uh, hearing those in the classroom so let's see once again with the help of visualization what do i mean for example uh, the range is 0 to 360 right and I am saying that basic angle alpha is 20 in the first quadrant. Then my general angle theta is also 20. Right? So sine general angle is equal to sine of basic angle is same. In the second quadrant, my basic angle is alpha. And my general angle is 160 because we measure all the way from here. This hole is 180. 180 minus 20 is 160. So, now if you see, because I am saying is sine theta equals to sine alpha, right? So, now I am checking for second quadrant. So, sine alpha is 20 and sine theta which is 160. If you check in the calculator, they will both give you the same answer. And what did we learn from here? A, S, T, C. So, all angle you can check. For here, you can check for sine cos 10. If you will take cos 20 and sine 160, they will not give you same answer. They will give you opposite answers, right? So, if we check for cos and 10, we will see that cos 20 will be positive, but cos 160 will be negative. So, negative minus negative will give you positive. So, it's better if you check on the calculator right now what is answer of cos 20. And then minus multiply by cos of 160 because this answer is negative. So, only when negative multiply by negative then it will be equal to this. That's why we say for the second quadrant that cos alpha is equals to minus cos theta for the second quadrant because only sine is positive in both. So for the second quadrant sine theta equals to sine alpha but cos alpha equals to minus cos theta. Same goes with 10 right because according to ASTC 
only sine will be positive here. Let's see in the third quadrant. For example, my basic angle is 20 degree. You see here we are seeing the relationship between the basic and general angle and how we can apply trigonometric ratio. So what I mean to say here okay, for the second quadrant if I want to find out cos 160 I just need to find out cos 20 right because it's a basic angle I can apply trigonometric ratio. So whatever the answer of cos 20 will be cos 160 will be negative of that answer. So let's see here. So in the third quadrant for example basic angle is 20. So my general angle will be what 200. Okay, I am measuring it anti-clockwise. First, second, third. It is a third quadrant. So, A, S, T, C. So, according to conclusion, only 10 of general angle should give me positive answer. So, we can check on the calculator. You can also try. I have tried for one number. So, what I am doing, I am doing sine 20. And I am saying it is minus sine 200. Because according to the conclusion, we can say okay, for the third quadrant, my sine alpha will be equals to minus sine theta. Right? Because I am in the third quadrant. So, let us check. Alpha is 20. Theta is 200. Sine 200 is minus 0 0.342. So, minus minus plus and we can say okay, 0 0.342 equals to 0 0.342. So similarly you can try for cos and 10 and you will see that 10 answer will come positive. So that's why we say for the third quadrant only 10 of basic angle is equals to 10 of general angle. Similarly you can check for your uh, fourth quadrant. So I hope it made sense what is basic angle, what is the relationship between uh, basic angle and general angle in four different quadrant so with this i will end this video and in my next video i will explain the concept of identities and solving quadratic equations so if you have learned learned from this video please like and subscribe it and if you have any question you need any clarification you can write in the comment your positive constructive feedback will be helpful for me in future thank you very much take care